Eris cable modems in the doghouse. Yeah, because, um, you know, I went out and bought an Eris to replace uh, the modem that I was using, my, my Comcast supplied to modem. Motorola right. bought Eris not so long ago. Correct. And, uh, you know, and, and Motorola has had a good name and, and label. In fact, that's what I was using until uh, my, my friend at Cox said, oh, no, 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 you need this Netgear CM600. That's the one that I mentioned a couple weeks ago that has now, it's got so many, <laughs> so many bands. I'm getting, I'm measuring 300 megabits down and 30 megabits up. And it's like, okay, thank you. That's a hundred times what I had with my, <laughs> with my two T1s. So welcomes Gibson to the 21st century. Um, okay, so here's the story. Um, it has been known since 2009 that there is a, a type of backdoor in Eris modems. It's a, it's a daily changing password based on a seed which is, is in the firmware such that, that the firmware algorithm generates the password of the day. And so it is possible, if you know the seed and what day it is, to potentially access these, these cable modems remotely. Um, the, the various news coverages is calling this a double backdoor because there's a second password you need. But it turns out that is simply and always the lower, the, the lower five digits of the device's serial number, which can be obtained without knowing it. So once you know that, and if you happen to know the seed used in the algorithm to generate the daily password, you've got a problem. Turns out, most of the manufacturers never change the seed. Of course not. They leave it set to the default. <laughs> of course they do. Of too much course work. they do. <laughs> That's, this, this is, is, a, this is this, getting to be an old story, isn't it? It, it really is. You know, uh, M, uh, all capitals, write this down. M P S J K M D H A I. That's the seed. And that's what all the modems use. And so all the bad guys know it. So the history here is that uh, recently Bernardo Rodriguez, who is a vulnerability tester with Brazil's Globo TV network, um, he was looking at the firmware in some of his company's cable modems, which they were going to be providing. And he found an undocumented library, liberis underscore password dot so. It provides this backdoor, which allows, given that you had this information, privileged remote login, given that you know what day it is. So... He then did a, he, he looked at three different models, the TG862A, the TG860A, and the DG860A. All three of those have the firmware, have this vulnerability, and a using the Shodan search engine that we've talked about often. Shodan is this unnervingly, powerful it's like it's like google for internet of things or you know google for everything on the net where it's indexing not web pages and and websites the way google does it's indexing anything that responds to packets anywhere on the internet it has found more than 600,000 of these devices Publicly, well, of course, a, a cable modem is public. It's publicly facing. So whereas the their IP address may change, that is so, you know, Shoden may not be good for, for absolutely nailing for sure a device by IP because as we know, ISPs can and periodically do or at least may 
change the IP address on specific physical modems at customer premises, um, still there's way over half a million of these. And you can imagine now that this news is public, um, that the bad guys are going to start having a field day. So uh, this guy did contact Eris and, they, and asked him not to reveal details about the modem's password generation algorithm. And he didn't, but he doesn't need to. Because this is the problem with these sorts of things, is it relies on secrets. And we know, well, it relies on a secret, which is unfortunately identical for every single, unless changed, for every single modem. Now, it's worth noting that Comcast uh, told uh, DSL uh, reports uh, that they don't use the default. So uh -huh. until everyone finds out what Comcast uses, right. <laughs> Comcast subscribers will be safe. But as soon as someone, you know, looks in their firmware and figures out what Comcast is using, then again, we have a problem. So, so you know, the, 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 the lesson here is that, is that it just, there's no way to offer something like this with anything that is universally defaulted. Um, I, I would argue that the biggest problem is that these back doors are in place and may well not even be used. No one may be using them. So here's like a feature, a bullet point, which was made available for, for the, the cable providers that allow them to access for who knows why. Maybe to, that's the way they update their firmware. You can also, uh, so, so th this does create, uh, uh, Bernardo wrote, a full busy box Telnet SSH shell session that allows you to do anything you want to on this. So these little guys are running some some version of Linux, um, and uh, or or a small Unix or 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 something. And this lets anybody get in. So the only way to do this safely, if this is what you want to do, is the that random number per device, where, for example, when a cable company first pairs themselves up with the cable modem, they, they generate a random number, they stick it in the cable box, and they, they make a note of it in the associated file. And, and, of course, now the problem is if you lose or forget that random number, you, uh, you know, you'd have to tell the customer, hold the reset button down to do a factory uh, restore or, or, or something like that. But it just, there isn't a way to equip 600,000 devices, no matter how clever you are. I mean, you, you, you could say, clearly, they tried to be clever. They created a seed that generates the sequence. The sequence creates a changing everyday password. Then they also, but beyond that, they also use the, the lower five digits of the serial number. So, okay, the problem is once that becomes out, once that information escapes, now everybody has access to 600,000 cable modems and can get up to all kind of mischief. So they're, they're, the problem is this is the kind of secret that... that is never kept. It cannot be preserved. Um, so the the way to the only way to do this is, for example, maybe have it disabled by default. If if the if if the number is blank, then the this is the back door is not even open. Or if a if a cable provider wants to do it, then generate a random number rather than than a clever algorithm, because then at least every single one of these 600,000 cable modems would have a large, absolutely unknown, random number that is, is associated with nothing else, not with, with the modem, with the vendor, with nothing, completely random. And it would be as good as any of our crypto is in terms of protecting that with the obligation that, that it somehow needs to be, you know, that, that random number cannot be algorithmically generated that the in the fact the the cable modem company cannot have a secret algorithm that generates it because once again 
when that is, gets loose, that one algorithm, then all the devices that are that were keyed by that algorithm are vulnerable. It's got to be just pull a number out of the air. It's the only way to do it securely. And and so, again, who knows? I mean, this is a great lesson of, about security and and how to do it wrong and and why even being this clever didn't work. You, you can't be. You you have to if you're going to have the security, you have to sacrifice the convenience. Um, but then you get real security.